Hello, everybody, and this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and today I'm very excited because we have one of our podcast hosts on the, on call today. He's back, and he's here to talk about positive parenting and to talk about how we ways that we can help our children elevate to young, happy, healthy adults, and he has some great parenting tips to offer today. He also has his own podcast on our station, and he talks about various topics, and they are amazing. So I say check out his his um, po- his podcast and his uh, and he is just um, truly amazing. I, by now, you should know who this is. It's Sean Robinson, and he's here today. He is an author and a coach, and he's going to give us some great parenting advice. So, Sean, take it away. Stacy, thanks for uh, bringing me back. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I guess first I just want to say like there's really no right way to do it. There's a lot of wrong ways, but when we're talking about parenting, it's it's just not about trying to tell someone else what they're doing. It's it's more just about realizing how we can be better at it and how we we can change what we think is true about the way you know we are with ourselves and also our kids. Right. You know, I, I think it's, you know, we, we all grew from different generations, like our, our parents grew up a certain way, we grew up a certain way. And, um, you know, there, you know, mistakes are to be made. And, you know, but there are, there you know, 70% of our, our society, it comes from dysfunctional families. And, you know, we want to break that cycle, you know, and I think if we start incorporating healthy behaviors in our families, you know, and change some of the things that we grew up with, we could slowly start to build, you know, happier, healthier children that actually have a positive outlook on life and could actually learn, you know, that people aren't perfect and learn how to, you know, that, that people make mistakes and they can forgive their parents when they make mistakes. Cause we all make mistakes. There's no handbook on how to be a perfect parent. We're all going to make mistakes being parents. So, you know, we, we just have to learn how to communicate and how to be good mentors and how to make the best decisions possible. Sometimes they're going to be right. Sometimes they may be wrong. Sometimes, you know, we tried our best, but we didn't get, we weren't spot on, but you know, as long as we have have that good communication with our children and we have good healthy skills that you're going to tell us about we could actually you know learn to build a happy healthy home and hopefully our children will take the things they learn in our home and those positive things that we we reinforce them with they can carry on to their their life and and their future life as as a parent if they do decide to have children yeah definitely the you know the a lot of the things that we we pay forward to our to our kids is the things that we're learning uh, as we grow up and you know we can't there's a lot of different ways that we grow up there's a lot of different you know households and a lot of different things we deal with and you know you mentioned forgiveness and if that's something that you know we're prepared to do then great if if we're not there yet that's still great too but at some point we become responsible for who we are and, and we can spend a lot of time. And this isn't just parenting. This is for every, you know, development tactic, you know, we can spend all day blaming anyone and everything else, but at some point we are responsible for it. And thinking about that message we pay forward to, to our kids and and even the the people around us at work and, and wherever, you know, we have to own that about ourselves and then we have to change that narrative and and a lot of the way we do it is is getting away from that mentality that we have to stay a certain way we have to be the same person that we have to do these things because they're the only way i know how to do it and and you know when we're when we're learning these things and we're growing up in these environments and and you know whoever our parent figures are at the time it's you know if they're doing things a certain way that's that's all we know to be true right or wrong that's that's just what it is so i think we're naturally going to absorb a lot and do a lot of those same things and like i said it's up to us to determine you know if you didn't like it as a kid it's a pretty good chance your kids aren't going to like it so you know what you do with that is kind of up to up to you you know maybe you didn't like it because it was what you needed maybe you didn't like it because it was no not a good environment right I think, you know, sometimes I see from from my own clients and I see from just friends and family, too, is that they came from dysfunctional homes 
and then they're be, they're they're reenacting the same behaviors, not realizing they would talk about how they hated when mom and dad did X, Y, and Z. And then all of a sudden you see them doing X, Y, and Z. And I don't think they really realize that they're re repeating the behavior because they're so used to that environment. So do you have any suggestions like how people can, if they're, if they're thinking it's normal in their head, and even though they didn't like it as a child, but they're so used to that behavior that it's become a part of them, you know, how, you know, what do we do? Like, do we look dive de de deep into ourselves and think about, are we happy with who we are? Maybe we get some support, outside support, or do we maybe, you know, start to listen to people if someone makes a comment? Because when you, a lot of times I've noticed too, if people don't ask for your help, that means they don't want it. They're not looking for it. And if you try to make a suggestion, even to be helpful, it usually backfires on you. So, you know, what's your intake about, you know, how to go about that? Well, I guess first it's, it doesn't matter what it is. People, if, if, if they don't want your input if they don't want your suggestion um you know you shouldn't give it and and a lot of the 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 examples is like make sure you get that first right it's not about going to everybody we meet and everybody we know and trying to fix everybody because yeah. that's not going to be received very well but if if we're looking to you know if we if we're in any situation the be the best thing to do is is compare and, and and not to compare yourself with someone else but you know, look at yourself, look at what you're doing, look at your environment and decide if you can do something different, if you can do something better. Maybe what you're doing, you you can learn through, even if it's a sitcom on TV, right? Because it's always right. the best case scenario. You're watching yeah. it and it's like, oh, you know what that, I wish our family did that. I wish we had dinners together at the table or I wish whatever, you know, then start doing that. Right. Start doing things that, that are going to put you more in the the frame of mind and the environment that you want to be in. And while we're comparing this this way and, and learning through others, it's in that that we get awareness to the ways we were, you know, brought up or the environments we had because we only know what's what's true. And yeah, what you said, we're gonna start to become that person almost subconsciously. But with that awareness and with the people around us and you know if that sitcom is is something that that relates, it's it's at least an example that we can use to, to, to try and change a few things that, that we're doing. And, you know, that's, that's going to translate, that's going to translate to, to all of our relationships, including, including our kids. And, you know, some things that, that we have to remember is like, we're adults. Most of the, most of us out with children are, you know, adults and we know what we know. And I think automatically, and I, I was this way for a bit too, but like, I'd forget that the kids don't know that yet. Yeah. You know, the common sense and the the different things that, that we learn as we grow, they just don't have it yet. So there's a lot of teaching that still needs to be there instead yeah. of, you know, a lot of that pressure and a lot of that, uh, you know, assumption that they're just going to know things automatically. Right. I think one of the things too today too is is that we're so involved with our iPhones or our 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 you know electronics that you know you know so many times that you know you'll sit down with a family member or you sit down with your family and how many of the kids are on the phone and they're googling and they're looking at their messages and stuff like that and someone had made a suggestion you know that they always make sure that there's like a rule in their house that they they no one's allowed to look at the the cell phone while they're on the table and i thought that was great you know because it's like you know you think about it and it's hard for people to do too you, everyone's constantly you know we didn't have that when we were growing up but for whatever reason now it's like everybody has to constantly look at their phone what's going on every single second of the day you know, but, you know, if we had a nice dinner, let's say, and everybody is just communicating, how was your day and da, 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 you know, communication skills and understand and learn to understand the people in our household. That might be one, I think, one thing that might be a good idea too. What do you think? Yeah, I think that that like any habit and, and things we're working on, that that's a big one. Everybody, and it's not just our kids and our home life, like that's at work, that's that's everywhere we go. I'm guilty of it as yeah. well. It's just continuously in the habit of looking at the phone and, and I'll look at it in the same, you know, two minute span multiple yeah. times. And it's just something I know I got to work on, but yeah, at the dinner table, if you, you don't even let the phones anywhere near the table, or if, you know, when you walk in the house, you set them in a certain spot or different, different rules yeah. to the house, to your own household is, you know, that's important. And 
and, and really that applies to anything, right? Anything that we want to limit, anything we want to, you know, increase, decrease in our life. It's just find yeah. a way to, to structure it in a way that, you know, will work for you. And I, th- I think, I think a lot of the way with, with parenting and the way, the way we're working with our, our children is, you know, we forget about the change in what they are dealing with. You know, we're not, they're a different generation right. than us, than our parents, than our grandparents. And, you know, a lot of the values that that we carry through and, and those are important, but, you know, they don't always translate. They're not always relevant today. You yeah. look at any anything in history and, and just things evolve. And if we're stuck in an old generation, whether it's our own or parents and the way we were brought up and yeah. we're trying to raise our kids that way, it may not work. And right. we, we forget about this and we blame society and we say the kids are soft and we, we just automatically blame other things instead of maybe I'm not evolving. Maybe I'm not adapting. Maybe, you know, what I'm trying to do with, with them and, and with, with the things that, that we're doing, it doesn't matter if everybody else is doing it. It just doesn't set up for a better, you know, to, to handle society better. You know, yeah. if we're going to limit the the technology and we're going to say, oh, my kids will never play video games. My kids will never have, uh, you know, their own computer. My kids will never do this. You know, what is that going to do to their upbringing? What is that going to yeah. do to them being the, maybe the only one in class that's never playing these things or doing these things? And, you know, we have to stick firm with, with our values, but at the same time, like if we're raising an old generation, it's not going to be good for their mental health. It's not going to be good for their development in, yes. in what is, what is their generation? Right. No, I agree. Totally. I think that's one of the biggest problems that people get stuck in the the way they grew up in their generation and they get stuck in the old ways and they, you know, as time evolves, life evolves and everything changes, you know, the way people think, the way people dress, the way people react to things, the way people view life, you know, every generation has gotten more liberal and more open to, and, and, you know, if if you're going to get stuck in the past, you're not going to be able to relate well with the younger generation. And if you're a parent or you're going to be a parent and you're still stuck in this old generation and you're not open to the new generation that, that our future generation then how good is your communication between your child going to be if you could only think one specific way, the way you grew up and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and a good example of that is, is a lot of like the coming from my space um, in like the construction industry and my dad was a mechanic and like, there's a lot of like masculinity that gets, that gets paid forward. And there's a lot of just yeah. toughen up and be a man and fix it yourself. And, and a lot of the things that defined my early parts of this, my, this journey. And, you know, the more we pay that forward, the more we, we set our kids up for, for failure. Right? Yeah. That's an attitude that, you know, it's going to, that could relate to racism. That could relate to, to any sort of element that yeah. is not, it's never been accepted, but it's definitely less accepted now, or, you know, you know, abusive. So yeah. if we don't get rid of those, those things that we, we feel or the things our parents felt, yeah. it's not, it's not going to be good for us. It's not going to be good for our kids either. No, not at all. I agree a hundred percent. I think, I think we, we really have to be open to what's going on in the world and, 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 you know, start to try to think of things with an open mind. And the problem I see is that so many people are inside the box and they don't want to get out of that box, you know, but they have, you know, in order to see life in the present and in order to understand what's going on in this world, we have to really be open to what the, you know, about the big picture and not the little picture. There's so many people, I think their eyes only see the little picture and they don't really look at the whole picture around them. And maybe if they took time out to look at everything instead of just one small segment, they'd have a better understanding of what's going on at home, at work, in their life. And they'd have better, maybe better communication skills, even with their children and better ways of figuring out ways to, to raise their children so they could, you know, incorporate a a healthier and happier lifestyle within the home. Yeah, definitely. Um, And and it's, it's a lot of pressure, right? And being like parenting, we don't, we don't know anything. No. when we get started and the bit that we do know is from our old experiences or like that sitcom we watched on tv yeah. there's just there's so many things we don't know and we have to figure it out as we go yeah. so 
in that in that theme, like that frame of mind, we're going to make mistakes. Our parents made mistakes. Their parents made mistakes. And the right. longer we we kind of dwell on that and and not try and improve it, you know, for our own mental health and our own benefit, but also you know those those we're responsible for, you know, the the the, the harder it's going to be. You know, we we have to at least accept that what happened happened, and and or that the decision we made wasn't the best, and yeah apologize apologize if if that's what what's needed and then fix it make right. it better you know set it up that that you know you've at least you've learned your lesson and then the next the next decision is is going to be different hopefully if we keep continuing to make the same mistakes and and live in that same pocket or that same box if you yeah. if you will to use your reference you know we're not going to grow we're not going to set anybody up for success Exactly. I agree 100%. You know, I think it's it's so important that people, you know, have to really um, also th- take things day by day and not hold grudges. You know, I see a lot of times too, is that parents, you know, get really angry towards their children. And some of them, you know, really hold resentment towards their children. And they don't, they're, you know, they don't realize that children are not perfect, just like they're not perfect. You know, sometimes like, you know, we were talking about being judgmental before the show too. Too. And, and, you know, you could be judgmental towards your child and be angry because they made these decisions, you know, and the child could be really angry and judgmental towards you because you made these decisions, but where is that going? You know, and I, I think really, you know, children have to understand forgiveness and parents have to understand forgiveness. And, you know, I realized as my children got older, you know, I, I realized that we only, the only thing we could do is, is install the best qualities and and morals and and values into our children and give them the best possible care we can when they're younger but once they get to that certain age they're adults you know whether we want to accept it or not and they're going to use everything we learned you know as when they go into the big world and i think we have to keep that in mind and realize that everything we're teaching them and everything we're be how we're behaving in our house is what they're going to use to you, those are the tools that they're going to use when they get out into the big world. And then think to ourselves, do we really want them to see us yelling all the time? Do we really want them to see, you know, anger, you know, anger being exemplified on an ongoing basis? Do or do we want to see them looking at their parents communicating and finding an answer or working things out as a team? Or maybe having a group session and talking about it openly and not getting mad at each other, but just listening and trying to understand, even though we may not agree with each other, you know, and because all these little things, we don't think about it when it's happening, but they're, they're absorbing it. They're like sponges, kids, and everything they, they get from us, they're, they're, they're going to go out in that world and they're going to use everything that they soaked up all throughout their years as soon as they get out in the big world. And all they're going to have is what we gave them and what they learned from the family. And so mm-hmm. it's like when you think about it that way, it's really important that we take a good look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves too, because I think that it's so easy to judge other people but the, it, the hardest thing is looking at our own faults and then trying to fix them. Yeah. Yeah. And and we look at other people and whether they're doing things right or wrong, like we're automatically going to be judgy. We're like, yeah. we're automatically going to feel judgment. And, and then it's like, you know, if they're doing something right, it's there's judgment and there's, you know, maybe we're finding something about it. That's, that's wrong. And all oh, they're that way. And, you know, it's such a, such a bad thing thing to to do that because maybe they're doing it right maybe maybe there's no trauma in that version you know compared to what what you might have gone through or dealing with and and you know the the thing with that is like a lot of people will defend that with a whole bunch of excuses you know the biggest the biggest one was like well you know this this is what I went through this is what happened to me so and I turned out fine so they'll be fine right and I mean you don't you can't you don't know that you can't guarantee that and who says you're fine you know, at first, exactly. who says that this person that you are can't be better if, you know, you dealt with some of these things or if we dealt with some of these things that, that we we deal with. And, you know, they're, they're, I was fine because I got spanked and, you know, all the things that, that we went through. It's like, you know, you don't have to continue to do that. Right. You can realize that that wasn't probably the best way yeah. that that, uh, you know, you, you could you could handle a situation and, and it really wasn't you know, the, the best now is, is the sit in the corner at a timeout with a tablet. 
Well, no, but that's up to the individual to decide with their environment, right? Yes. None of this is about telling anybody about how they have to do it. It's it's just an example of how we can be better by helping each other. You know, our parents and parents' parents, they didn't have these resources. They didn't have this show, any other show or the audio books or all the things that are readily available to to just go in and get into and, and learn. So while the excuses that that were you know from generations ago may have been a bit more justified then you know we can't say that now we can't say that we didn't know we can't say that that the information like i just didn't have the information and, and make the same mistakes because just like we're raising a different generation we're in a different generation we have these things available if we're not using them you know whose whose fault is that right Exactly. Exactly. And that's so right. And I've made that comment too. It's like, you know, uh, you know, they, they, they give you this book when you, when you, when you're pregnant, a lot of them, you know, when you have like a bridal shower, so you'll, you'll get this book from somebody like what to expect in the first nine months. Well, okay, great. What to expect in the first nine months, but no one tells you after the fact when the baby's born, you know, what are you going to expect for the next 18 years? You know, it's like, you know, it's like you're on your own. And the best thing to do is like what you said, reach out, learn from others, learn from audiobooks, learn from podcasts, learn from other people, you know, and, you know, they have so many support groups now too. people talking about similar topics, you know, maybe go into those support groups and just listen and see if it's something that resonates with you. And if you agree with, and, and if you don't, you just leave. And if you do, maybe you'll come out with a couple of ideas that you didn't have before. And the same thing with the audio books now and the podcast there are so many out there right now that you're you have to find something that you can resonate with and you know it, it's so helpful to have guidance because you know years ago you know and still today people feel like they're so alone but there are so many resources that we didn't have growing up that they have mm. now yeah it's it's everywhere and and a lot of it too is is free like you don't have to be a subscription you don't uh, you carry a subscription for a lot of these things because yeah. You know, while that's available too, and there's great content in that direction, but it's just another way to avoid the excuse, you know, right. like, you know, I don't have that subscription, so I can't listen to that book or I can't do that thing. It's like, okay, but, but there's other things, you know, you yeah. can go on a YouTube and you have to deal with a few ads, but the stuff is still out there. Right. You can still get it. And, yeah. you know, when we're, when we're talking about that growth and, 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 you know, getting in into that space, it's why wouldn't we want to do that? Right. You know, why would we want to transfer the things we didn't like when we were growing up or the things that, you know, was happening around us with other kids? And, you know, it's like you you get rid of that by being better. Yeah. By learning. And right. And, and then it makes our kids better because, you know, they didn't know what we may have may or may not have gone through. Right. But, you know, they'll have different problems. And that doesn't mean that they won't grow up and be like, oh, my parents didn't let me play Fortnite for eight hours a night or whatever it is. It's like, you know, they'll have their own issues and, yeah. you know, hopefully the resources are even better then for, for them to, you know, to, to fix the things that we messed up. Right. It's just a constant cycle. But at the end of the day, we are not raising an older generation and we have to adapt just like everybody else with everything else. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. And I think too, if we are, learn how to communicate well with our with our children and we are not judgmental and we're open to what they say, we they'll actually later on, they'll come to us, even even as teenagers or tweens, you know, and they'll come to us and they'll ask us for advice, or even as you know, when they're young. Because I there's people I know that the, the kids are afraid to ask their parents for for advice because they know that their parents are old fashioned. They're going to explode. They're going to get judgmental. They might yell at them, and they don't know what to expect. So they don't ask them for help, and they go and they look for other people to ask. But you know, you don't know who they're asking, and you know, you don't know if they're getting the right advice. But if we can actually learn to not like explode or or you know be judgmental and and try to look at it, whatever our children tell us whether we like what they're telling us or not you know try to be open-minded and try to talk to them like we would talk to a friend over the phone you know or if a friend came to us we're not going to start yelling and screaming you know at them we're going to try to talk to them if we could do the same thing with our children you know we might have such a great communication that even when in the adulthood when they need help they can come back to us and and ask us for help you know and guidance and you know that's what you want really i think what do you think oh yeah definitely and 
And like my kids are young, so I still have a lot of learning left, but you know, it's, it's not about trying to tell anybody, I say it again in a different way. It's not about trying to tell anybody that everything I'm doing is right. And everything, you know, someone else is doing is wrong or whatever, you know, it's just, I recognized at a point in my development and my growth that I was becoming something that, that I didn't like something yeah. that, that, yeah. that was a situation that, that just wasn't ideal. And, you know, I got to a point where it was like, I started to do these different things and try these different things and be more open with communication and, you know, give, give my kids a chance to to talk. And then it was like, you know, they're, they're different problems than, than when they get older, but like, they're still the same to them. Like in, in that moment, in that mindset, at that age, they are, it's a, it's an important problem to them. And, and it may not oh, seem yeah. big to us, but in their, in their small minds, it's like, you know, this is the big deal. Yeah. Right. So, so we have to really understand that, that while we're constantly growing, like they're, they need whatever full support in that moment. And like back to the suck it up and fix it or be a man or whatever version of that. It's like, you know, that that's not productive because that's not giving them the tools. That's not, you know, showing them how to deal with these things in these moments. And then they'll end up growing into that, right. They'll, they'll, they'll yeah. learn the things and then, you know, it'll be new things, but that baseline from, you know, set, uh, our own growth and, and what we can transfer will, will help them grow, grow more. And even when they get older, you know, you're still going to find that, you know, things that we might not think is a big deal because we've done it so many times or been through it so many times is detrimental. And I think it also, also rely, you know, it, it, it depends on the person's personality too. You know, if you have p- people with, people who can handle like high levels of stress, you know, X, Y, and Z might not be in a big deal for them and they'll handle it, you know, whereas someone else might have a panic attack and they'll be like, their heart will start racing because, you know, something's happening and it might not be a big deal to somebody else, but to them, it's like the end of the world, you know? So, you know, it it all depends on who you're speaking to. And I think also we have to also, you know, analyze, especially with our kids, I've learned from my own children is that each of my kids have a completely different personality, totally different from each other. So Mm -hmm. when I talk to them, I have to approach each of them differently because one, the the way I talk to one will, will work with that one. But if I try to copy that, say the same thing to the other person, they're going to take it a totally different way and it's not going to be good, you know? So it's like, Mm -hmm. I have to, you know, it really, you have to step back and look at that person's personality and say, okay, what type of personality am I dealing with and how should I word myself or how should I approach this situation? So it ends up in a positive result. Yeah, absolutely. And that was, that was a huge thing for me going from one to two to three. It was learning all these personalities and, Mm -hmm. and learning how to you know, adapt to them and realizing yeah. that they're not all going to like the same things. They're not all going to learn the same way. You know, it's, there's going to be different things that bother them day to day and, and like dealing with any, any people, but like we, when, when we, like we realize that these, these small people are going to have their own opinions and their own yeah. thoughts. And, you know, it's not up to us to, to control and mold them into, into this perfect soldier it's it's just a matter of providing that support and you know keeping them safe and facilitating what what they do like and don't like and you know i'll still you know because dinner times seem to be the worst it's like <laughs> all, these, all these little personalities and things come out and nobody wants to eat what's there it's yeah. at the end of the day like we still have to have those values we still have to have that structure and you know the, the odd time maybe there's something else but we make one thing you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's still key. I still keep a lot of that in, in place because you have to still be the, the adult, you have to still yes. be the one in control and, and yeah. you can do that. You can still have control. You can still do all the things, but you can do it in a more progressive way. You can do it in a more it's gentle way if it's yeah. required or a firm way, like all of the things still, you know, have to happen in this, in this life, but it's, it's it's all in in the in the the way that the message is delivered and the way that it's handled and you know the the way that uh you know the way that we 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 handle it with with them and with ourselves yeah and i noticed from from growing up with my children is that their personalities developed the moment they were born and it's funny because they all have the same personality as they did when they were little 
you know, they're just matured, but that personality is still the same personality. And, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, they also learn how to manipulate at a very young age. And it's like, you know, okay, how do you handle that manipulation? You know, cause they all know they all want their own ways, you know, and they all use certain tactics to try to get their ways, you know? And it's like, okay, so how do you handle that? How do you, you got to make sure that your children know that you're the parent, you're the decision maker. And, you know, and at that, you know, what you say is, is what stands, but you want to, you don't want to seem like Sergeant Slaughter where, you know, the kids are terrified and, and they, you know, and they, they're, they're, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they kind of like back off. You want to be able to show them that you're the authority figure, but you want to do it in a way where, they, you know, they, they know they can't manipulate you, but they feel close to you at the same time. Their respect, yeah, I think. It's about respect. I was going to say it's, it's about respect because while the kids, we don't like, we don't know what respect is. You can feel it. You yeah. Know? And, and, and when you trust that, that you're going to get, maybe it's not the answer you like, but that doesn't mean that you know, the next day you're not going to be able to do this thing, right. You're not going right. to be able to like, it's, it's about balance and it's about respect. And and if, if you don't have that because your kids are afraid of you or because um, whatever that environment that's is, important. they don't trust you. That's not, that's not productive for you. It's not productive for them. And that stuff compounds, right? You, you will build that over time positively, or you will build that negatively. Yeah. And if you think forward to the kind of person that, that you want to be and you want them to be, um, you know, what does that look like with the environment that, that you're facilitating right now with the way that you feel and think about certain things? Because like those, you said, those little sponges are picking up on a lot more than we think. Yeah. And if we're going to talk to somebody a certain way, they're going to think that's the right way, whether yeah. it's good or bad. If mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, even if that person is, a, you know, the cashier or the server or the whatever, you know, the people that we run into in our lives, the kids will see that and we are teaching them without knowing it what the acceptable uh, uh, environment and the uh, actions are. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. And I think you have to learn how to discipline your children. Some, some parents are afraid to discipline their children, but there are productive ways to discipline your child. You know, whether you take something away from them that they can't use for a day or two, or you think it's something that is going to have an impact. So they know, wait, I can't do this because there's a consequence at the end. If I do it and they find out this is going to happen and I don't want that taken away from me or I don't want to get punished and then I want to go out with my friends or I don't want my bicycle taken away, you know, whatever the case may be, but you have to have discipline too. And I, I see sometimes a lack of discipline with some parents is that they let their kids, you know, have free range. And then all of a sudden the kids are controlling the household and the kids are doing what they want and they're saying whatever they want, whether it's respectful or not. So I think there has to be structure in the home too, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and then when we get in that environment, we, it's all about changing environment too. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is like being stubborn and, and being too proud. And, you know, if we're, if we're in an argument or the kids aren't doing what they're supposed to and whatever the age is, if we change that environment, it's like, you know what, let's go for a walk or yeah. you know, my, my kids are young. It's like, Oh, you know what, why don't we just, let's get out of here. Let's go for ice cream. Yeah. And whether or not like we want to consider that a reward, cause I, I don't want to get into, you know, thinking that the behavior is worth the ice cream. Right. It's, about, it's about changing the environment. It's about getting to that point where, where they're no longer in that mindset where things are crazy and, and, you know, how tempers are up, it's, it's, it's changing it. And then it becomes more of a positive moment. Right. And in that moment, because, you know, we all have to be mind readers, maybe we learn something else, something else yeah. was bugging them. And, and that was the reason for the outburst. or that was the reason exactly. for whatever the moment was. Right. Very good point. You know, because sometimes we don't realize that our kids might be acting out because there is an underlying cause. We don't know what goes on in school. We don't know what happened when they're outside playing with their friends. You know, you know, our kids don't always tell us and the older they get, less they tell us, you know, so you don't know what's going on, you know, and so you have to take that into into consideration. And that's where good communication comes in. You know, they may not tell us all, everything as they get older, but if you have that good communication, maybe they will open up and, you know, ask for guidance and, and tell us little scenarios and open up to a certain degree. Yeah. And, and it's trust and respect again. 
you know, we, we have to prove to them as they get older and as they start to establish their own, their own, you know, personalities, likes and dislikes. So we have to, we have to prove to these people yeah. that we're, that we're responsible for that, that we can make these decisions or that we can handle these situations in a good way. Or if we make mistakes that we'll own those mistakes, right? Because as we talk about the sponges, you know, how, how are we raising them if, if they don't ever see us apologize when we did something wrong or when, you know, a situation goes, you know, contrary to what we want, it's like, well, are we the parent and we say, uh, you know, suck it up and deal with it. I'm, I'm the parent, you're the kid you know, you're seen, you're not heard. Or do we, or do we apologize and say, this is what happened. I thought wrong. And, you know, next time we won't do that. Right. We we raise the kids to grow up in that environment. So, you know, we, we, we make them say sorry when they hit their brother or sister. Right. And sometimes they don't do it with, with good context, but if we show that environment and, and, you know, they grow up seeing that, then that creates more for them to, to grow up and like, you know what? Yeah. I made a mistake and I'm sorry. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's so true. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you had to emphasize it and into a couple of of main points, what would you like to emphasize that you think are really important that we talked about today? I think the biggest ones is nobody's telling anybody how to parent. Um, you know, you'll, I'll see, well, my, all my kids, like even just this weekend, my, my daughter, three and a half years old was just sideshow freaking out and she wanted something and we, it wasn't happening. And I just had to change the environment and I could feel the judgment around me because she was freaking out. Yeah. We, I can't control that. Right. I took her from the environment. We, we went for a walk. She calmed down. Things were good. But in that moment, you know, there was probably a, we were at a hockey a hockey game and there was, you know, a sellout. So there was everybody around probably had all their parenting ideas. So yeah. the big thing is like we're I'm not here telling anybody how to do it. Nobody should tell anybody how to do it. Yes. But just that we can change. We don't have to do it the same way we were brought up. We don't have to do it the same way that that we thought we was true. We can yeah evolve we can do things differently and and you know to to be aware of how our actions and how our lessons that we're giving them through the way that we handle different situations and the way that we talk to them and the way that we you know um the way that we react to things like yes. we are in control of a lot and 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 speaking of control the last thing I'll add is like I said earlier we are in control of how we show up yeah. If we want to show up the way that we were raised or the way that, you know, would, like we can decide as we get older that that wasn't productive, that wasn't what we liked and we can change that at any point. Yeah. No, it's so true. It's so true. And I, I like those. Those are really good points. And I, I think, you know, at, we, we're we always learning as parents. I don't care what age you are. You're always learning. And I think if you keep those core principles that you talked about today, in our head and we practice them. I think, you know, no matter what age you are, even if they're younger or older, because my kids are pretty much almost grown up now and your kids are young, but we still go through the same thing and we still can relate to each other. So that tells you that no matter how old your children are, what you know, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, that you understand because you're a parent, because I think all parents go through the same things and that we all could help each other in one way or another. But the core principles that you mentioned today, I think could be valuable for any age, you know, know like no matter how old your kids are as a parent you know these are these are things that we could take with us and learn from each other because you know these are things that will help you and you know i i think it's important that we we you know learn that we have to have respect and we you know we have to respect each other we have to have good communication we have to really you know learn to you know accept that we make mistakes and and to be able to forgive each other and to be able to talk to each other and i think it's great that you mentioned about taking but the child out of the environment because even even as an adult if you're you're going through something with your your teen or you, you know take them out of the environment and let's say let's go for a walk let's do this you know before the door starts slamming and the, lo- the locks get locked you know that's what happens mm-hmm. in the teenage years and the, you know so but uh but, you know but you know try to communicate the best you can and there's always room you know to learn and uh 
you know, as long as there's people like you and I, and there's long through their podcasts and, and audiobooks and groups and other parents, you know, reach out to parents that you think too are good examples, you know, that you think they did a good job raising their kids and ask them for their feedback. You know, I'm going through this. Don't be embarrassed because I'm sure they went through it too. They might, every, every person, you know, they may, that looks like they're the perfect, you know, parent. I guarantee you, if you ask them, they'll give you story after story about chaotic things that happen because there is no such thing as perfect. So I think we could all learn from each other. Now your website, can you tell us the different services that you do on your website and, and your website itself where they can find you? Yeah. So my website is seanrobinson.ca. Um, I'm on all major social platforms. Uh, it's uh, at going dry or at Sean Robinson, um, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, all the, all the main ones. Um, and then my, my website, uh, I put out a lot of video content, uh, a newsletter I put out every week with different strategies, different, different videos, um, posts, uh, inspiring posts, things that like meant something to me in, in this development and in, in my growth from, from all the different personal and professional angles, um, you know, certain coaching that I, that I, that I do to, uh, you know, just try and reach out to that person I used to be and that, that person that, um, you know, I, I could relate to that you know, uh, may benefit from some of my experience. And it's never about telling people how to do it. And and I've heard that about, you know, planting certain seeds and instead of giving that advice that, that maybe not be warranted and, and, you know, accepted, just, just given, just give a little bit, right. Just asking yeah. certain little questions that might get somebody thinking a bit differently about it. Right. Exactly. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Sean. Thank you so much for coming back today and talking about, you know, parenting, because I think it's so important. I think everyone's looking for guidance at some point, you know, and it's, it's, you really shined on a lot of really great things today. So I thank you for that. Thank you so much for coming on the show and, and talking about great principles and core values and different ways to parent and to really help your child and help your family overall. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too. Thanks.